Hi everyone, this is Alma Duncan. I'm founder of the Fabulous Woman Network. I bring you greetings from Fab Hub Ashanti, located in Kumasi. Today, I want to talk about the book that I posted for the month. I have um, revised the mode of delivery. As you can see, this is a pre-recorded video. Um, the book we are we looked at for this month is Nice Girls Don't Get the Corner Office by Lois P. Frankel. Lois is a psychotherapist with a doctorate in counseling and psychology and she's authored a few other books. If you haven't read this book, it's available on Amazon. The name again is Nice Girls Don't Get the Corner Office and I loved it. I loved reading every bit of the 101 unconscious mistakes women make that sabotage their careers a lot of them i could you know resonate to and they mentioned so many um, of these uh, mistakes that we make um, how um, you know pretending it, is, it isn't a game so first of all the whole workplace is a game and people are playing a game you know so one of the mistakes we make is pretending it isn't a game working hard doing the work for others being naive and so many others and i've, I've just picked a couple of them uh, well three lessons that i have learned from this that i'm going to share with us so the first one i'm going to share uh, it's mistake number four. It says doing the work for others. And I'm just going to read from my laptop and then I'll just briefly talk about it. So this one says, when Henry S. Truman said, the back stops here, surely he was thinking of a woman. Our tendency to take responsibility for not only our own work, but also the work of others is yet another self-defeating behavior. Yes, you already, yes, sorry. Yes, you have a responsibility to your employer to ensure the delivery of a high quality product or service, but it is not your responsibility alone. Mm -hmm. Women have a nasty habit of saying, well, if I don't do it, no one else will. This only ensures that you'll be doing it for a long time. And there's another problem associated with taking too much responsibility. While women are doing the grunt work, men are building their careers. They are no fools. Promotions are rewards for getting the job done, not necessarily doing the job. I had a boss once who told me there are two kinds of people in the world, careerists and achievers. Achievers keep busy by doing the work. Careerists spend their time managing their careers. Truth be told, you've got to be a little of both to get ahead i totally love this and she shares a few coaching tips but i just wanted to share my own experience so i had also been before um, running the fabulous man network and corporate training solutions i had been in corporate ghana as well and uh, worked in a few other countries when i started out you know i loved things like making coffee and i was an intern or temp so those things were okay and i loved coffee and i loved to eat and stuff so where's the food you know kind of person but as i grew in the corporate environment um, i found myself in a role that was sort of a supportive role to the main operations i was in hr in a few of my roles and i found myself always doing other people's work things that didn't relate to my job because oh perhaps Amma, you understand this better can you teach me then i end up doing it uh Amma, can you help me with this then i'm oh you know Amma wants to be a good girl and all that and wants to be helpful and everything but there's such a thing as being over helpful to the point where i wasn't doing my own work i was always doing other people's work and then at the end of the when, when it's appraisal you look at your own objectives in life okay what have i been doing and even till now this is something that i have to consciously pay attention to because i find myself instead of focusing on you know the agenda for the day or the task i set out to do i end up doing other things for people because x needs help or y needs help there's nothing wrong with helping others but you've got to well what i have understood is i've got to focus on getting my job done and when it's done, I can be of value to other people as well. 
especially in a day. So um, these are the coaching tips that Lois offers. I just wanted to read um, to it's about three or four of them. One, stop volunteering for low profile, low impact assignments. If necessary, sit on your hand rather than raise it. I just love this, right? And it's all he, she also says, recognize when people delegate inappropriately to you. Practice saying unapologetically. You know, I'd love to help you out with this, but I'm just swamped. Do you think you can say that? Then stop talking. I just love this woman, don't you? She goes on to say, avoid the inclination to want to solve the problem for them. It's their problem, not yours. And the next one says, if you're a manager or a supervisor, don't let people delegate up. This most often happens when people reporting to you claim to be unable to perform a task or say they don't have the time. Avoid the tendency to take it over because it will be faster if you do it yourself. Instead, suggest they ask a co-worker for technical assistance or if you have the time, use it as a teaching opportunity. I love this as well. And the final coaching tip is use self-talk to replace feeling guilty about saying no. <laughs> Try saying something like, I don't have to feel guilty about seeing that my needs are met. I just totally love this. And, you know, I'm just doing a bit of this, but I really hope that you get the book if you haven't read it already, because it really goes on further to explain. By the time you are done reading the book, you really have a better understanding of what these mistakes are and how we are making them as women. Well, if you're a man, I think you should read it as well. It will help you understand as better, you know, if you are, if you have somebody you are mentoring who is a woman, you can help them better, knowing that these are some of the issues or problems that some of us have. So that is for the first mistake that I wanted to talk about. The second one I love is mistake number 80. It says, not asking questions for fear of sounding stupid. Anybody? So I'm going to read the point she makes. How many times do we have to be told there are no stupid questions? Am I okay? I think I am. <laughs> they are working upstairs. Right, so I'll take that again. How many times do we have to be told there are no stupid, stupid questions before we believe it? The problem is that we've come to rely on the old adage, it's better to keep your mouth shut and look like a fool than to open it and confirm it. Well, I disagree. There are so many ways in which women remain silent that we don't need to find anymore. Asking a legitimate question, as opposed to making a statement couched as a question, which I'll talk about later, to ensure understanding is a sign more of confidence than of ignorance. If nearly th three decades of working inside corporations has taught me anything, is that if I, if I don't understand something, most likely no one else does either. Women sometimes don't ask questions because they don't want to waste the group's time. Asking yourself the simple question, will the answer apply to only me? Should help. It should help you decide whether you should ask it. If the answer is yes, you know you will have the chance to ask it following the meeting. Then, okay, so I'll take that again, sorry. If the answer is yes, and you know you will have the chance to ask it following the meeting, then wait to ask your question offline. If the answer is no, or if you know you won't have the opportunity to ask again, as in the participants won't get together again or the speaker won't be available, then ask away. Do, however, be sensitive to the needs of the other participants in the meeting. If you've already asked several questions and you notice people getting fidgety or the meeting is running late, consider how critical it is that you get the answer just then. Um, so this really is about fear and how we have all sort of fears as well, human beings really and one of them is fear of asking because you think oh the question is so basic but really a lot of the times really a lot a lot a lot of the times it's not 
uh, a question that you shouldn't ask. You really should go ahead and ask. You really should go ahead and ask because you 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 crave the answer. You genuinely are confused. It's okay to ask. For me, it's okay to look like a fool just to get my answer. I, I really, I find that fear is generally a very, very bad person or thing or whatever. And self-doubt, these two. And I, I, I consciously do my best not to give them a chance, really. Don't, don't be afraid. Just ask. I mean, there, there's no other way I can say that. For me, I just ask. My motto for a long time has been just do it. The thing I'm afraid of, just do it. If I, I, I am afraid, even in spite of all the encouragement I'm giving to myself and motivation, my second motto is do it anyway. Do it. What's the worst that can happen? I did. Do you know the things that I've been afraid of <laughs> doing that I've done and I'm still alive? Ah, just do it. So I'm just going to read the coaching tips that she gives. Um, coaching tips. If you don't get it, ask. It's far better than going off in the wrong direction. Absolutely. The second point. Observe people in meetings and you will notice when others are confused and not understanding the message. Use this as an opportunity to help the group by saying something like, I can tell by the looks of people's faces that it's not quite clear. Can you give us some examples or state it in other words? Yeah, and the third one says, trust your instincts. If it doesn't seem clear, it's probably not. And I'm going to just read the last, I'll skip the next coaching tip, get the book. And I'll read the last point, which says, if people make you feel stupid, see my accent, stupid, over a question you've asked, you can, uh, you can assume it's their problem, not yours. If they do it consistently, ask them point blank why they feel the need to put you down just because you've asked a question. Really, some people feel that the only way they can become big is if they put others down, put them in their place. Yeah, so that's the second lesson. And the final, final one I wanted to, oh gosh, it was so hard for me to decide what to talk about because almost all the mistakes were like things I could relate to. The final one I'll talk about because I think I have three more minutes or less than three minutes is putting the needs of others before your own. And this one, need I say more? Let me just read. As women, we frequently find ourselves in positions where our needs come second to those around us. Hmm. Whether it's taking care of a disabled parent, delaying your education until your husband completes his, or cancelling your plans because a child has asked you to do something for her. The results are the same. Your needs don't get met. And I'll just skip that and come to the workplace. In the workplace, we see the phenomenon manifest itself when there are limited funds, perks, or opportunities. Wanting to play fair or be kind, a woman will put her requests on hold or lower her expectations. Pretty soon, she feels as if she has no choice at all and doesn't see that she has created the problem. This is so true and has been my story for so long, but thankfully, hallelujah, Jesus has saved me. I have freedom now, so now I do things for myself. You know, I also put me first. I, I, I'm also valuable. I mean, now, instead of expecting others to value me, I have started by valuing myself and I'm really loving it I do stuff for myself you know like sleep when I need to now I actually sleep early and wake up early um, I treat myself to nice things you know sometimes I go places and I'm in a hurry 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 to go home after the job after speaking running 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 to go home I've stopped now I take my time to enjoy I just want to read one point that one coaching tip because I don't have a lot of time it says make sure you have a life outside work that you want to go home to workaholism is often an excuse for not having a life ah the book says it 
and I know it is true. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching me. Please go get the book Nice Girls Don't Get the Corner Office by Lois P. Frankel. I'm going to bring you more. Um, the next book I'm going to post to our Facebook page, and then you can get a copy and read for yourself. Once again, this is Amma Duncan, founder of the fabulous Woman Network. Bye.